There was a time when everyone in the world was pagan, and virtually every society practiced human sacrifice, routinely killed unproductive, sick and unwanted children, saw women and children as property at best, saw life as a meaningless endeavor. In such a world, would you have believed any differently? Remarkably, in this world of darkness, there was one man who came to a different conclusion. One man who chose a different path, who journeyed in a different direction, who discovered and followed the one God and lived by his divine given principles. Only one man, and his name was Abraham. And God made a covenant with him. Quote, Thomas Cahill, The Gifts of the Jews. If we had lived in the second millennium BCE, the millennium of Abraham, and could have canvassed all the nations of the earth, what would they have said of Abraham's journey? In most of Africa and Europe, they would have laughed at Abraham's madness and pointed to the heavens where the life of earth had been plotted from all eternity, where man cannot escape his fate. The Egyptians would have shaken their heads in disbelief. The early Greeks might have told Abraham the story of Prometheus. Do not overreach, they would advise. Come to resignation. In India, he would be told that time is black, irrational and merciless. On every continent and every society, Abraham would have been given the same advice that wise men as diverse as Heraclitus, Lao Tzu, and Siddhartha would one day give their followers. Do not journey, but sit. Compose yourself by the river of life. Meditate on its ceaseless and meaningless flow. Abraham was one man who charted a radically different course. And from this one man evolved a people unlike any other. A people who crossed paths with virtually every great civilization in history. A people whose history is unlike any other. A people whose impact on humanity is unprecedented. A people who are known to the world as simply the Jews. Over 3,300 years ago, an event took place that happened only once in human history. And that was an entire nation experienced and witnessed divine revelation at Mount Sinai. The giving of the Torah, the Ten Commandments, the five books of Moses, by God to the Jewish people and through them to the world. What happened at Mount Sinai changed the world forever. For the first time in history, Man had been given a divine moral compass, a guide for how to best live one's life, to perfect oneself and the world. In the ancient world, in the eastern part of the Fertile Crescent, also known as the Cradle of Civilization, is the Holy Land, the Land of Israel. And there, for centuries, the Jewish people flourished and lived in peace. And then, because they did not live up to their divine covenant, the Jews faced destruction after destruction at the hands of their enemies. First came the Babylonians, then the Persians, then the Greeks. And finally, with all their fury, the Romans, who forced them into exile and dispersion. For over 2,500 years, Jews suffered persecution. They were tortured and massacred. Their synagogues 
burnt, their women violated, their books vandalized and set ablaze, century after century after century. Throughout their history and even until modern times, for reasons of jealousy, of people blaming the ills on a convenient scapegoat, and because Jews stood up and continue to stand up for the absolute moral standard that comes from the belief in one God and the holiness of human purpose. The Jews have faced and continue to face the demonic and destructive forces of anti-Semitism. Quote, David Lloyd George, British Prime Minister. Of all the extreme fanaticism which plays havoc in man's nature, there is not one as irrational as anti-Semitism. There is no greater example of this than the evil of one man who projected his own failings and those of his followers on the Jews, and that was Adolf Hitler. Providence has ordained that I should be the greatest liberator of humanity. I am freeing man from a false vision called conscience and morality. The Ten Commandments have lost their validity. Conscience is a Jewish invention. It is a blemish. The heaviest blow which struck humanity was Christianity. Bolshevism is Christianity's illegitimate child. Both are the inventions of the Jew. The struggle for world domination is between me and the Jews. All else is meaningless. For over 2,500 years, since the first exile in 586 BCE, Jews were scattered across the globe like stubble in the wind. God will then scatter you among the nations from one end of the earth to the other. For over 2,500 years, Jews were driven out of their homes in country after country after country. But. Despite the persecutions and even the unimaginable destruction of the Holocaust, sustained by the unswerving faith and trust in God and His Torah, throughout those 2,500 years, something remarkable happened. The Jews not only survived, but flourished and changed the world. Quote, Paul Johnson, author, A History of the Jews and A History of Christianity. It is almost beyond our capacity to imagine how the world would have fared if they, the Jews, had never emerged. Certainly the world without the Jews would have been a radically different place. Humanity might have eventually stumbled upon all the Jewish insights but we cannot be sure. To them we owe the idea of equality before the law, sanctity of life, dignity of the human person, social responsibility, peace as an idea, and many other items which constitute the basic furniture of the human mind. Without it, the world might have been a much emptier place. Quote, John Adams, the second president of the United States. The Hebrews, the Jews, have contributed more to civilized man than any other nation. They have given religion to three quarters of the globe and have influenced the affairs of mankind more and more happily than any other nation, ancient or modern. Quote, Woodrow Wilson the 28th President of the United States. The laws of Moses contributed suggestions and impulses to the men and institutions, which were to prepare the modern world, and if we could have but the eyes to see, we should readily discover how much besides religion we owe to the Jews. 
One remarkable fact is that since Alfred Nobel first created his prize, over one-fifth of all the Nobel Prizes have been awarded to Jews. Jews who comprise only less than one-half of one percent of the world's population, and yet have received over 20 percent of the Nobel Prizes for the greatest scientific, social, economic, creative, and intellectual contributions to the progress of mankind. But it is not only in their pursuit of human excellence that Jews have contributed more to the world relative to their numbers than any other people throughout history. It's their passion for meaning, purpose, morality in life, and their respect for human dignity that Jews have always been for good and for bad at the forefront of change. Quote, Winston Churchill, British Prime Minister. Some people like the Jews, and some do not. But no thoughtful man can deny the fact that they are beyond any question the most formidable race that has ever appeared in the world. But over and above their contributions to mankind, something else, something quite astonishing, occurred throughout Jewish exile. Over 2,500 years ago, there were approximately 10 million Jews in the world. Today, they are just under 14 million. In comparison, 2,000 years ago, there were approximately 30 million Chinese in the world. Today, there are over 1.4 billion. Throughout history, as if ordained, the Jews have remained small in number. And only a small number will remain among the nations where God shall lead you. And throughout these 2,500 years of exile, something equally astonishing happened. The Jews never let their dream of returning to their God-given ancient homeland they never lost hope. They never stopped believing that one day their dispersion would end. In 1978, before a Soviet court about to sentence him to 15 years in prison for the so-called crimes of studying Hebrew, practicing Judaism, and requesting a visa for Israel. Natan Sharansky said, For 2,000 years, the Jewish people, my people, have been dispersed all over the world. And still, each year Jews have stubbornly and apparently without reason said to each other, Lashana Haba Barushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. And today, when I am further than ever from my dream and from my people, and when many difficult years of prison camps lie ahead of me, I say to my wife and my people, Lashana Haba Barushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. After nine years of imprisonment, Natan Sharansky was freed, and in 1986, he immigrated to Israel and the communist regime that suppressed and incarcerated him collapsed and no longer exists. In a similar ironic twist of history, after the Nazis were defeated in 1945, in 1948, only three years later, the United Nations voted for the re-establishment of the Jewish homeland, the State of Israel. To date, after 2,500 years of dispersion to over 100 countries on five continents, 
the Jews are the only people throughout history to survive, retain their identity, and return not only once, but twice from exile to their ancient homeland. The story of Abraham and the story of the Jews is the story of one man who dared to be different, and his descendants, a people whose wandering was endless, whose persecution was unremitting, whose vision for a better world was unparalleled, whose belief in one God and their commitment to His Torah and the dream of returning to their homeland were unshakable. One man, and from him, one people who dared to be different. Quote Thomas Cahill, The Gifts of the Jews. Without the Jews, we would see the world through different eyes, hear with different ears, even feel with different feelings, and we would set a different course for our lives. Quote J. M. Roberts, History of the World. No other people has produced a greater historical impact from such comparatively insignificant origins and resources. To understand the Jews, one has to understand history and the remarkable role they have played in it. However, to understand how they have survived, despite all odds, one has to look past history into the world beyond the natural, into the realm of the divine. Here is what Sir Thomas Newton, Bishop of Bristol, said about the Jews in the 18th century. The preservation of the Jews is really one of the most single and illustrious acts of divine providence. What but a supernatural power could have preserved them in such a manner as no other nation has been preserved, and no less remarkable, is the destruction of their enemies. Let it serve as a warning to all those who, at any time or occasion, are raising a clamour or persecution against them. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. If history and the story of the Jews has proven anything, it is that God has kept his covenant his promise to the Jewish people. Here is a quote by Leon Tolstoy, the Russian writer, written in 1908. What is the Jew? What kind of unique creature is this whom all the rulers of all the nations of the world have disgraced? crushed, expelled, destroyed, persecuted, burned and drowned, and who, despite the anger and fury of their oppressors, continues to live and to flourish. The Jew is the symbol of eternity. He is the one who, following the faithfulness of his ancestors, has for so long had guarded the prophetic message and transmitted it to all mankind. A people such as this can never disappear. Writing about the Jews in 1899, Mark Twain observed that the Egyptian, the Babylonian, and the Persian rose, filled the planet with sound and splendor, then faded to dream stuff and passed away. The Greek and the Roman followed and made a vast noise, and they are gone. Other people have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, but it burned out, and they sit in twilight now, or have vanished. The Jew saw them all, beat them all, and is now what he always was, exhibiting no decadence, no infirmities of age, no weakening of his parts, no slowing of his energies, no dulling of his alert and aggressive mind. All things are mortal but the Jew, all other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? All things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. 
What is the secret of his immortality?